On today's video, I tell you all about drifting alignment angles. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. My name is John. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. I put out weekly videos. So on today's video, we're going over all different types of alignment angles, how to actually align your drift car. I'm gonna be going over what I do to my own vehicle. Okay, so the three main angles we need to learn about today, camber, caster, and toe. Let's start with camber. Camber is a measurement of the center line of your wheel and tire relative to the road surface. You could have neutral camber, negative camber, and positive camber. Neutral camber is when you have zero degrees of camber. Your tire is just straight up and down. Positive camber is when the top of the tire pushes outward, and negative camber is when the top of the tire tucks inward. For drifting, you want negative camber in the front. Negative camber can improve your handling by keeping the tire perpendicular to the road as the car rolls. Uh, now there's also a downside to negative camber. Adding negative camber will reduce the amount of tire on the road surface and it can also wear the inside of the tire much faster. Now drifting requires a good bit of negative camber in the front. On my physical car, I had negative four and a half degrees of camber so that when I was at full lock, my outside tire was straight up and down. This can be achieved with caster camber plates or your coilovers, stock, upper hats, they mainly have camber adjustment. Let's move on to the next angle, caster. Caster is the measure of how far forward or behind the steering axis is to the vertical axis viewed from the side. Now in drifting, you want positive caster. Positive caster helps with steering wheel return and self-steer. The more positive caster you have, the more the car is going to self-steer. Now when I say self-steer, what I mean is when you have the back end of your car in a drift sliding out and you let go of that steering wheel, when you start to transition to the other side, you can let go of that steering wheel and the steering wheel will counter turn to correct for the rear end of the vehicle coming out. Now on a stock vehicle, the caster angles are anywhere from three to five degrees. Now that is a positive. You don't want a negative. Anywhere from three to five degrees is a, on a modern vehicle. Some vehicles come with seven degrees. I would recommend anywhere from seven to nine degrees of caster, positive caster, because that would give you a good amount of steering wheel return and better drivability at full lock. Now it comes down to tow. There's many things you can do. You could tow in, you could tow out, you can do zero tow. Let's be real, you're gonna be beating your car up. No matter how good your alignment is after that first track day, that alignment's no good anymore. Generally, what I like to do is a total tow out of 0.4 degrees. So what is tow? Tow is the measure of how far inward or outward the leading edge of the tire is facing when viewed from the top. So as you can see in some of these pictures here, this was neutral tow, this is tow out, and this is tow in. Tow in is when the tires point towards each other, and tow out is when the tires point away from each other. Running some tow out will increase your steering angle at full lock, more than it would if you had zero tow or tow in. So I like to run 0.4 total tow out. I found that the car tracks pretty well this way, and I enjoy how it feels at higher speeds on the track. Now let's talk about shortening your steering knuckles. So in this picture here, I have a steering knuckle with a tie rod pickup point and a ball joint pickup point. This is a stock steering knuckle. As you can see, the tie rod pickup point is pretty long. Now you can cut it out and then shorten it, and that will increase your steering angle. I'm not gonna go into details on this because I'm not very well versed in actually cutting knuckles and shortening them. There's a lot that goes into this, and you can really, really, really mess your car up if you don't do this correctly. Steering knuckles are cast, so you have to know how to weld cast. If not, you can have a failure and lose your steering. But effectively, what this is doing is shortening the pickup point and allowing your wheels to turn more before the rack hits its stops. This is also how Ackerman is adjusted. Now on a typical car, this is what your Ackerman looks like. On a proper set of drift knuckles, this is relatively what your Ackerman is going to look like. Both wheels will be pointing the exact same direction, which is really only good for drifting and not anything else. On a normal car, the steering Ackerman angles are different for a purpose. While going around a corner, all the tires turn along the circle with a common center point. 
The intention of Ackerman geometry is to avoid the need for tires to slip sideways when following the path around a curve. This makes the inner wheel steer a greater amount than the outer wheel because the inner wheel covers a shorter path. If you tried to drive a drift car on the street with drift Ackerman, you could do it, but your tires would start skipping because they'd be fighting each other. Think of it like a welded differential. If you're making a right-hand turn, the right rear tire is going to be spinning a lot faster than the left rear tire. So by welding the diff, they're both spinning at the same time, causing the car to hop. So what should you do when you go to get your car aligned or if you align your car yourself? It's all trial and error. You wanna set everything to a base point to start and then adjust from there. I suggest you set your camber to negative four, your caster to about positive seven, seven and a half, and your toe 0.2 degrees outward. That will give you a pretty good starting point. I wouldn't go over 0.4 degrees of toe out. That can really start causing some like tire wear issues and uh, binding issues. It just won't drive very well. Also, try to keep your cross angles, so your cross camber and your cross caster angles the same. Keep them even. Making them not even can cause pooling issues and other drivability issues. Camber pulls to the most positive and caster pulls to the most negative. So if your right front tire has negative four degrees of camber and your left front tire has negative three degrees of camber, it's going to pull left. So try and keep those even. If you have positive seven degrees of caster and negative four degrees of camber on the left side, copy that and do that exact same thing on the right side. So when you test your car, if you feel that it's not steering fast enough for you, add some caster, do like half of a degree at a time. If you notice that your lead wheel is flopping over and you have some positive camber at full lock, try adding some negative camber into it and that will bring it flatter at full lock. Well, these are some of my alignment angles. Hopefully I can help you out in starting your own alignment and getting your car to drive the best that it could. That's it for today, guys. My name was John, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.